Hello, everybody. Today, we are going to be talking about time tracking in Trello. And I started to record this, and I ended up talking way longer than I thought I was going to about this. So I'm going to try, for your sake, to keep this short and sweet. And if you want a longer version or more detail, let me know, because I've got it. I've got it saved in the archives, and I'm happy to share that. But we're going to talk about time tracking today, because even if you don't necessarily think you're into time tracking, you might need it for certain activities. Like if you're a freelancer and you have clients, you might need to track how much time you're spending on them. Or if you have a virtual assistant, for instance, you might need to set estimates of how much time you expect them to spend on something. And then if you're paying them by the hour, you need to be able to track that. So if you're doing any of those sort of things, you're going to find time tracking to be useful. And there's a few options for actually several options for tracking your time inside of Trello. And so in this video, we're going to go through through what some of them are. So first of all, I want to direct you to this board that I made. I'm going to link it in the description of this video, but I basically created a little uh, chart for you here of all the different time tracking options that you have within Trello and different sort of things you might want to know about them, pros and cons, and kind of to, to help them stand out. And so I don't want to give away everything all off the bat. But spoiler, we're going to start with my favorites and then kind of work the way down to some other options that aren't necessarily my favorites. And I'll explain where you might find them most useful. So let's go ahead and head over to this virtual assistant task board. So I'm going to start right off the bat with my favorite, which is the Time Tracker Kronos Power Up. So if you head over to the Power Ups, you can look for it. It's called Time Tracker Kronos. And Let me bring it up here so you can see what it does. So I'm actually going to remove the uh, activity timer off here just for now so that you can actually get a good, good feel for what is going on with this. So basically the way this works, it's your standard sort of time tracker. So it, you know, you, you add it to the board, you can add an estimate for something. So let's say, I think it's going to take an hour. I can set that. I can start a timer and it keeps going in the background. I can add a comment and say, whoop, I can add a comment and say, yeah, yeah. That's a manual update. You can add that, sorry, up here, here we go. Best in comments and say what I'm working on. It'll save that for that log. So super helpful. As soon as I'm done, I just hit stop timer and it you know, shows I've worked 27, 21 seconds total. Here's how much time's remaining based on that estimate. And you can't see because it's a whole hour, but it actually fills up the entire progress bar. So you can kind of visualize how far you have to go. And you can either show the details, which will show a log for each time session that you start and stop. Or if you're not interested in that, you can hide it. And this is one of the few power-ups that I found that lets you toggle that on or off. Most of them, I will say most of them, go ahead and show those details, but there's not a way to toggle it off. But this is kind of nice because if you want to, then you can see everything you need there. So that's pretty cool. You can make manual entries if you need to. I think you saw on that plus button, you can just kind of put how much time was spent on there. Three weeks, four days, and 12 hours. That was a lot of time spent on something there. So you can do that if you need to. You can pause a timer. You can stop it. You can see my favorite feature on here. So you start the timer here. And you can actually notice on the front of the card, it actually says who's running a timer on it. So you can see in real time who's working on the card. So I actually think that's really cool if you're working with a team and you want to see kind of like who's working on what. That's really neat. And it's, you know, a good way to feel like, oh, I'm not working alone. Someone else is working on this task today and I'm working on this one. So I thought that was really cool. And then you've also got some really great options for reporting. So actually ignore this report tab. I don't exactly fully know what that does. Um, It basically puts it in a calendar view, which I didn't find helpful, but maybe somebody will. But if you click the dashboard view, this is kind of what you might be a little bit more used to. So you can see logged and you can see by members You say working logs made by me. You can filter it by labels. So let's say if you want to be able to see specifically like how much time you spend on different whatever you have your labels on, you can see the totals for that over certain dates. And so it's a great way to categorize and organize that info. This is the easiest, I would say, of all the filtering reports that I've seen. So 10 out of 10, recommend that one. Like I said, the only con I would mention, and it's not even really a con, but I don't fully understand how this uh, this report works. It looks like, I guess you can kind of visualize it in more of a calendar view or a timeline view if you want. 
It doesn't really do anything for me. Maybe it does for somebody else though. So feel free to play around with that if you want. But if it doesn't do anything for you, it's not a problem. It doesn't doesn't get in the way there. So I want to show you one other one real quick. Add power up. You're going to add the activity timer. So this one is actually pretty cool too. I would say I would say the ideal user for this is someone who wants something that's really custom because this is actually an open source timer. You can see the code for it on GitHub and you can submit feature requests and things like that. But it's your pretty like run of the mill sort of sort of timer. You can see in here, button is right there for starting and stopping timer. You don't have to go over here. It does the same sort of thing where it shows logs, which um, one thing it does is it will not register anything that's less than 30 seconds. So we're going to have to wait 30 seconds and then I'll, I'll show you what a log looks like. But it's got the same standard like start and stop uh, timer there. You can add an estimate. One thing I actually don't like about this is that multiple people can add an estimate. And I, I don't I'm not really a big fan of that. I guess it could be useful if you have like multiple people who are working on a card and you want to bring those together or something. I, 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 I don't know. They list that as a feature. I don't know that I'd say that that's entirely useful, but yeah, so that's a thing. So, you know, one of those things that if you're not having multiple people do that, or if you just set a procedure that they don't, it's not a problem. You can add manual logs if you need to. I think it's been 30 seconds now, so we should be able to see. If you go to manage time, you can actually see the different timestamps and how much was worked on it. And if you click time spend, it'll actually group that by member. So again, kind of like we saw on the other board, you can see how much time people are spending by specific cards. Then if you go to activity timer, you can you know, view your report here of exactly how you'd like to see it. It's not my favorite of the reports. If you're kind of wanting this overall sort of reporting um, format for the board and how much time people are spending on stuff, I'd probably use the other tool. But this is a pretty slick experience for kind of getting started and, and getting in there. And one other thing that is interesting about it is you can access the timer data through the REST API. So if you're like a programmer and you want to be able to access you want to have a timer in your trello boards and do your own thing with the data this is probably the right way to go with it because you can just take that data and, and do whatever you want with it so that is that and then yeah those are my two favorites i'm going to real quickly go through the other three that i found and played around with just so you can kind of understand them a little bit more but if you're here to just kind of get a quick recommendation feel free to, to head off now but if you want to stick around and learn why that's my favorite, here we go. Here we go. So another common one that came up is activity. And this is actually the second most popular one. It has 25,000, uh, been on 25,000 plus boards. And I don't really have any beef against this one. The ideal user is probably someone who just wants to get started right away and doesn't need any big features. It has the you know same sort of start stop button on the card. It shows a log, shows the total time and broken out by members like all these other ones have. So that's kind of nice to see. It lets you export your data to a CSV. Again, pretty common for all of them. Uh, one thing that does really stand out about this one that I like is you can quickly add increments of time. So let's say you forgot to start a timer. Rather than having to go in and manually add an entry for 30 minutes, you can just click this button twice and it will add all of that. So that's actually kind of nice. And yeah. Also, I think I said that this shows logs. It actually doesn't show logs, but uh, it does group it all by... Um, the card, or sorry, by members, you can see total amount of time spent on it. So if you are wanting to see the, the logs of like each time that was set, this is not your tool, but all of the other ones that I've mentioned pretty much do that. So just know that. Um, so yeah, so that is that one, pretty cool. And then this is another one. So Aura apps in general have some pretty cool power-ups you've probably heard of. They have uh, like a file export one. I think they have like a gallery view. They have threaded comments. So they've got a couple different ones. Generally, really great power-ups. I'm gonna be honest, this one is not my favorite of theirs. It's in you know, a kind of standard, I guess the ideal user is probably somebody who just wants some like rolled up reporting for their board and they really just want to be able to export something at, at the top level with some time associated to cards. Uh, that might work. And if you're planning to manually enter time, because it doesn't have like a start and stop timer on it like the other ones do. But it does show logs. You can export it into CSV or Excel formats and you can kind of filter by the board. I'll show you when they get to that screenshot in a second. But if you want to view your logs, you basically, here we go, go to this reporting and you put in 
the date range, and then you can group by member or by card and see the logs like that, but it actually doesn't show on the card data itself. So it's a little bit hard to get to if you're like, well, how much time did I spend on in this or that? So I thought that's kind of interesting. Um, and there's also no way to provide estimates. So if you're looking for that, this, this doesn't track that. And then the last one I sort of looked at, this one's called 3T. I'm gonna be honest, don't really recommend this one. The only person I can see it sort of working for is if you're like extremely desperate for something that you can use off desktop. And even then I'm not entirely sure. I was a little confused by the concept, but they have this, it seems like you can make a QR code that when you scan it, I guess it starts and stops a timer. But again, I'm not really sure how it attributes who that is to. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But other than that, this is, you know, nothing too exciting. It's not like the greatest UI. It doesn't show any logs on the card. Um, you have to get the syntax just right to be able to make an estimate. The only way to do that is to write a comment like this. And you really have to type it like with hours. Like, yeah, yeah it, 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 I, I messed it up a couple times, like even remembering to do the, do, the two colons. So anyways, um, it doesn't have any great options either for like overall reporting. So. I don't know that this is necessarily the option I'd recommend. And then kind of the last sort of genre of time trackers is other tools that are native time trackers outside of Trello that happen to integrate. So a good example of that is Toggle. And I actually really like using Toggle. And so one of the things, again, I don't always use it in my personal boards. When I'm time tracking, I'm generally tra uh, tracking for like consulting for clients or things like that. But when I'm tracking inside of my boards, I can, with the Toggle integration, I can specifically say, oh, this card, it relates to this specific project and you know this specific tag. And then from there, that's funny, it's not bringing it up now. I just had it in there. But, um, it, it can tie all of that together and then there we go and actually group all of those reportings together so when i go into toggle i can see exactly how much time i spent on videos and things like that so so i find that to be really helpful and a good way to to keep track of time but again that's only really useful if you're actually already using toggle or harvest or um apply and time cap those were the other time camp sorry those were the other ones that i saw in there that if you're using those that's great so um feel free to if you're already using a time tracker go see if they have some integration with trello and if not then these two i think are going to be the ones that i most highly recommend time tracker chronos and activity timer so one interesting thing to note, I kind of hinted at it with 3T, but power-ups do not work on mobile. So if you're trying to find a way to time track on mobile, there's not a great way to do that. And I'm actually contemplating doing a live stream where I try to build something like that with card buttons in Butler or Trello automation, whatever you call it these days. And um, seeing if I can make my own sort of thing with custom fields that will like basically I might need to use smart fields too. But anyways, um, if anybody's interested in that, let me know because I might try to build that with some automation and see see if that's possible. Because at this point, it's kind of difficult if you do want to track time um, without going to Trello on your computer. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, if I missed any time tracking apps, let me know. And I'm happy to take a look at them and, and see how they compare to the ones we've mentioned so far. But thanks for watching and I'll see you later.